Welcome adventurers. Today we're going to turn all this into this. Now I know it's been a while since I put out a video. I want you to understand that, you know, life happens. And during it happening, I had a chance to go to Twin Falls, Idaho. These images here are of the natural terrain around there and also of a place called Craters of the Moon, which is a national forest. 618 square miles of volcanic terrain that's been there for millions of years. And in closer inspection, I discovered that volcanic terrain isn't just black and gray. It's greens and blues and reds, yellows. The minerals that are in the soil there and then the rocks really enhance that experience for me. The fact is, is that scrub life and rocks, lizards, all sorts of things live in this area, but it's not just, well, black and white. So I decided to bust out some, well, things. Rock molds, sculpt mold, styrofoam, all kinds of stuff. Sand and gravel, grass, well, static grass anyway. Uh... But the first thing is, is these Woodland Scenics rock molds. Because well, I needed some realistic looking rocks and, well, they're perfect for that. I mean, that's kind of what they're made for. So a little plaster of Paris from the hardware store. Water. Mix up. Pretty, pretty basic there. Uh, you know, kind of looks like pancake batter. Kind of the consistency of pancake batter. Maybe a little runny. More like crepe batter. Oh la la, c'est bon, très bien, hein? So a little crepe batter into the rock molds and set them to the side to dry, cure, set, whatever plaster of Paris does when it's no longer liquid. Since I had more than my rock molds had, I used some aluminum foil. And of course, if you'd like to see me pour excess plaster in aluminum foil, you should hit the notification icon, the subscribe button, and of course, uh, share it with your friends and as you may have seen we also have patreon now the links in the episode description feel free to look, click on that and if you'd like to help support what i do here because it's not cheap sometimes i'd really appreciate it now these stair step styrofoam and this is just regular packing styrofoam i was making uh, modular hills at one point and this was my first experiment and well it didn't go as i wanted but because i am a Apparently a hoarder, I kept hold of these things for quite some time. And it's just regular packing foam, hot glued together. Here with a hot wire knife and good ventilation, as you can see all that smoke, I began covering it down to look like the stair step pattern I saw around the area of Twin Falls and Craters of the Moon. The volcanic terrain, interestingly enough, does lend itself to these sloping kind of broken hills. They come up and then just break off right at the face, re revealing these awesome rock formations. So I tried to recreate that as best I could with some styrofoam while still trying to make it playable because if it's not playable, there's not really a point to it in this hobby at any rate. Now, I needed to create some kind of undulating volcanic top layers, as you see in these attached pictures. To do that, I diluted some PVA glue and water and used shop towels. You can use whatever paper towels or tissue paper you might have available or even old t-shirt cut up, whatever the case may be. The, the point is, is you want to make this kind of layered, undulating look. And I did that by taking shop towels, which are a little denser, a little tougher than your normal paper towel. I laid them out over these some of these hills or in sections of the hills and then purposefully pulled the layers forward as you see here to make kind of an overlapping edge i wanted it to look uneven and natural so i didn't try to make it look even it's pretty simple i guess i mean don't make it look even by making it uneven in other words don't let the anal retentive side of yourself come out now, after those dried, I needed some texture. Now, none of this volcanic terrain is smooth, so I used my old basing sludge that I created some 
many videos ago, I don't know, a dozen or more, and I slathered it healthily on every area that wasn't the paper towel, as you see here, to make sure that I had some terrain texture. It also helps to strengthen the styrofoam. Now, the paper towel, I waited till it was dried before I uh, decided to trim it to match the edges of what I was building. And that's all this is. Uh, it cuts easily with scissors or an X-Acto knife. Now, the magic of sculpting, I guess. Not really. These are the uh, molds on the right, the actual rock molds. And on the left is the aluminum foil rocks. Now, interestingly enough, the aluminum foil rocks look a lot more like volcanic rock than they, well, the, the sculpted rocks that are made to look like real rocks. But I combine the two onto the rock faces to give a variety of detail and texture, both smooth and jagged, uh, deep detail and shallow detail. And I kind of just jigsaw puzzle these things together along the surface to create that exposed rock face. Now I will warn you, because I use the packing foam, the EVA or uh, expanded polystyrene, EPS foam, uh, regular polystyrene. It's super lightweight. So when you put these on the front, they come become front heavy a little bit. So do watch for that. Now there were some thin, smooth pieces that were left over from both the regular molds and my aluminum foil molds. But they look just like these piles of kind of smooth volcanic rock that I saw in many places. So glob of tacky glue and some handfuls of smooth little bits here and there really added a lot of beautiful detail and interesting texture for this and also makes it a little more playable because your character creature people can stand on them now this is sculptable in a video long ago or you know four or five months ago anyway i made my own sculpt mold i decided to buy some actual sculpt mold because i wanted to see the difference and i will tell you Though my effect works in my homemade stuff, sculpt -a mold the people who make it, they, they know what they're doing. It's worth the investment because a little bit, as you see here, just this little handful that I put in here, does every piece of terrain that I needed it to do for this video. That's three of these smaller wedge pieces, two larger pieces, and even a large circular piece that I had 3D printed months ago. Now, it is styrofoam, sand, glue, paint, and a paper towel, so I want to protect it. And here is your Mod Podge and black paint combo to seal everything up and make a nice hard surface to paint on. Now, volcanic rock isn't smooth. It might look like it a lot of the time, but it's not. Uh, closer inspection shows it has a rocky texture. It's rough, so I use gesso on all the places where... I use the paper towel to create a rock-like texture of unevenness that's rough. Now, I noticed in close inspection that the rocks weren't black. They were kind of just bluish gray. So, I got a bluish gray paint at Hobby Lobby. This big tube costs five bucks. And I have most of it left still after painting all of these terrain pieces with it. Now, I'm going to use a dark gray in this case. Uh, kind of an asphalt gray, and I'm going to kind of overbrush everything. It's a 80% coverage, I guess you could say. It's not quite a light, uh, uh, dry brush. It's it's heavier than that, but it's not a full coverage because I want the dark recesses to show through. So I bring it through to give an overall base tone to everything, and this really starts to show especially after I go with the pewter gray. Here I start to be a lot more selective, adding in the individual colors. And this is more of a dry brush, uh, but it's selective. It's only in places that I do this, not all over. I pick out a few rocks on the face to add some lighter tone to, to bring out some of their edges, but also some of their surface color. Now I go with this golden brown uh, to do the same thing again, but in different areas than the grays. This allows me to 
diversify the color because there, again there are so many colors as you saw at the beginning of the video it's not just black and gray there are these creams and tans and greens and i really should have incorporated some green into this but again pick out some rock here and there not only on the rocky broken face surface but on the flats as well here kind of a uh, off-white beige color Again, just selectively picking out a few spots here and there to apply it. And I go from darker to lighter on purpose. I find that it gives a more realistic tone. And there's no rhyme or reason to which rocks I am doing this to. I just pick an area and do it. Now this rusty red color was pretty prevalent in that area but I didn't want the whole thing to be this kind of burnt sienna color so I was more selective than nature was because well this is a sci-fi alien terrain right it's not going to necessarily follow the same iron deposit logic that earth does but I definitely wanted it in there so I slathered it on just like that and this uh, yellow oxide uh, Actually, a really prevalent color, particularly in the foliage. Most of the grasses, maybe because it's late summer, maybe because that's just the color they are, definitely this kind of, I don't know, slightly desaturated yellow color. But I wanted it not only in plant-like, but on the rocks. And I know right now it looks like these are just patches of color. But now I'm going to add in my black wash, black paint, water, and uh, a little bit of dish like anti-spotting agent and this really tones down everything and kind of makes it more combined now with a basic gray i'm going to lightly dry brush everything this is going to bring out the very fine points of all the pieces it's simple technique but i think this one step adds so much to this i could have left it after the dry brushing and been very satisfied with the overall results because not only with the black wash but this light dry brushing step really as you see there brings it out but i wanted more and by gosh there were plants all over the place of varying colors and styles so I'm going to try to incorporate that, but to enhance playability, I didn't use any kind of static grass. I used this clump foliage. Uh, there's lots of videos out there on how to make your clump foliage, and if you'd like me to do one of those videos, let me know. But uh, lots of other very talented people have already done it. Sprinkle it on, of course, with the parchment paper underneath, so the extras I can retain. But sprinkle it on, lightly tap it, to knock off the excess like so and now we can go on to some army painter brown battleground this really looked like the volcanic rock and ashy kind of uh, debris that was laying around so I'm gonna add it into some select places where I would think that rock and debris like that might catch it like along one of these creases so a little dabbing of the glue and I found that it gives a more realistic look if you put it on thick in an area and then dab out as you move away from the central area because it thins out where the paint is it makes it uh, less like a hard line and more like a natural accumulation of rock and debris now here i'm using some tacky glue because i'm switching to a slightly different kind of sage color clump foliage this represents some of the, well, sage type plants. And I've got a bunch of these little self adhesive, like, tufts from Army of Painter. I haven't used them that much, so I'm going to use them now. Now, super glue obviously will hold them on really well onto the base layer. So here's some, this is actually frozen tufts, but it looked very much like the deadish grass that I found all over the area of south central Idaho this is uh, uh, lowland tufts which I mean technically that is lowland and these are your like wasteland tufts which kind of look burnt or burnt tufts 
So I've got some variations of color. And of course you can use these as little or as much as you want. Now we want to make sure everything sticks. So a little isopropyl alcohol and then some watered down PVA glue. As you can see, it breaks up the surface tension so it soaks in. Now let's look at some glamour shots. This piece I actually 3D printed. It's four different sections. I found it on Thingiverse. There's a variety of files for it. I printed it a long time ago and never found a use for it. And now I have. There you can see the layering effect of the volcanic rock like it oozed up from the earth. And some grasses and scrub brush have grown on it over the years. Here, a wider section of basically the same thing. Part of it is just rocky terrain. The other is the flowing lava that has solidified, you know, a few hundred thousand or millions of years ago. I'm no volcanologist, so. Another one of mainly the flowing lava. I really like the ripple effect. I think it it really does reflect what I found in reference images and firsthand experience. It kind of looks like an undulating sheet. This is more like a just a hill that is eroded over the years, so there's less undulations to see, but they're still there. And of course, the other large section kind of offset the rippling lava effect more towards like the second third of it, so to speak. Little bits of debris on top. The rock faces I'm particularly proud of. I think they turned out really well. And as you can see, totally playable, all surfaces. Lots of variation in ways you can set it up. You can create ravines and choke points. All kinds of stuff. Well, thank you for watching. Now, if you're not a patron, you should be. Now go have an adventure in crafting.